This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. What is going on everybody? This is Vinylic Puma and today I'm back with another Fallout 4 Far Harbor DLC review, analysis, and location guide for you guys. And today we are going to be looking at the Marine armor now there was a lot of hype and a lot of like the preceding um like marketing blitz i guess that was uh set up for far harbor saying that this is the best non-power armor armor in fallout 4 and today we are going to find out if that's true and if it stacks up to the hype now real quickly we'll talk about the location of this armor uh, now once you encounter the children of adam in the dlc the zealot characters wear the marine armor however i think your best option is going to be to go through the main quest and if you complete all of the code breaker um, little settlement building tower defense missions um, you will eventually be able and you will have the locations revealed to you of where the assault version of the marine armor is located now of course in the way that all of the tiers for the marine armor work uh, there is zealot which is the lowest form there's the assault armor which has slightly better damage resistance and then there of course is the inquisitor armor which is another children of adam variant uh, that uh, has higher energy resistance and that's mainly on the chest piece so the marine armor assault piece has 50 damage resistance 49 energy resistance and then the inquisitor armor uh, has 49 damage resistance and 50 energy resistance now visually the zealot and inquisitor armor appear almost identically um, the assault armor is different in the sense that it is blue it's also got some additional like handles and like metal pieces that are all over it and looks really cool now overall the marine armor has e fairly even damage and energy resistance stats very much like the combat armor does from the vanilla game uh, and the another thing that's pretty cool is that if you had like say the assault armor and you wanted to revert it to zealot quality uh, there are no associated costs in doing so however there are considerable requirements in order to upgrade the zealot armor to either the assault or inquisitor type uh, you will need significant amounts of adhesive cloth leather and steel and this is all going to total out to about 24 adhesive 48 cloth 56 leather and 56 steel and you also will need an armor perk and a science perk both at level four meaning that you will need to be at least level 41 with proper perk investment to get the most out of your zealot armor and even upgrade it now this is the part of the video that i think there are going to be a decent amount of people that dislike what i have to say and i'm just going to go ahead here and i'm going to say it first off i just kind of have to say this the fact of the matter is, is that with each incarnation, each DLC that comes out, it seems like armor pieces get heavier and heavier and heavier. Um, now, and specifically with the marine armor, the biggest problem with the marine armor is its weight. For example, a fully upgraded marine armor, this is the assault marine armor, the one that is blue, weighs 81 pounds without the helmet. Now, the lowest tier power armor, so we're talking T-45A, T-51A, T-60A, and X-01 Mark I, weigh 92 pounds with the helmet included the biggest problem with the marine armor is its weight it is very heavy and it's almost useless because of that in my humble opinion and really speaking of weight the marine armor's damage and energy resistance per pound values are eclipsed by the combat armor entirely and the more specialized resistance armors like your synth armor for higher energy resistance than normal and your robot armor for higher damage resistance than normal. So what I did is I took each armor piece's uh, damage resistance 
resistance and energy resistance and I divided it by their weight and then I took an average of all of the armor pieces for heavy combat armor, heavy synth armor, heavy robot armor, and the assault or inquisitor marine armor and I came up with some global damage slash energy resistance per pound values for each. Uh, now for heavy combat armor you have 2.14 damage and energy resistance. For heavy synth armor you have 2.2 damage to 2.47 energy resistance for heavy robot armor you have 1.7 damage to 1.2 energy resistance and then for the assault or inquisitor marine armor you have 1.6 damage and 1.6 energy resistance this means you're getting worse damage and energy resistance per pound with the marine armor than you would have with say if you wore heavy combat armor heavy synth armor or heavy robot armor it is worth pointing out that the assault or inquisitor marine armor does beat the global energy resistance per pound value of the heavy robot armor and i would say if you want something more balanced than the heavy robot armor you should probably use the assault or or Inquisitor Marine Armor. Another thing that's worth mentioning is in terms of raw resistances, the Marine Armor is succeeded by both the Vanilla Games Heavy Synth Armor in terms of energy resistance and Automatron DLC's Heavy Robot Armor in terms of damage resistance. So for example, the chest piece on the Marine Armor is 50 or 49 energy resistance, which that depends on whether you're Inquisitor or Assault. The Inquisitor version has higher energy resistance, while the Heavy Synth Chest Armor has 52 energy resistance. Now for damage resistance, the chest pieces from both Marine and Heavy Robot are the same. However, the arm pieces from Heavy Robot Armor exceed the damage resistance on the Marine Armor pieces. Now I guess the argument can be made that this is a more balanced armor, more all-purposed armor, but the thing is, is I mean, you're going to be in most situations, you're going to be able to prepare uh, based on the types of enemies that you're fighting. So for example, through most of the game, you're going to have to deal with either ballistic or melee damage. So heavy robot armor is going to be the way to go if you decide that you hate a power armor. Now, of course, when you get to the Institute or if you fight the Brotherhood of Steel, you're going to want to use Synth Armor because of that higher energy resistance. So I guess that my verdict guy is, is going to be that, you know... This thing, I just don't think it's worth it. I think the big problem with it is that it's just so heavy. I mean, if they literally trimmed like three pounds off of the arm and leg pieces, and maybe they cut the like weight of the chest piece by five, I think this thing would be definitely worth using. But until then, I mean, this is really just a glorified and extremely heavy version of the heavy combat armor that was really already awesome in the first place. I also think that the upgrade requirements for this armor are just insanely high. You need an armor perk and a science perk level of 4. I mean, this means you have to be level 41 in order to even craft your own set. I don't know, guys. I don't think I recommend the marine armor. I think you have better options elsewhere. And really, I mean, you can get those without the Far Harbor DLC. Then again, if you do want to cosplay, I mean, this thing does look awesome. And, you know, I will say this before I leave this end this video. Um... The number one thing that Bethesda could do to improve this armor is just decrease the overall weight. And really that can go for a lot of the stock armor pieces in the game. They are really just too heavy. I mean, something that weighs like an entire suit of armor, not even including the helmet, if it weighs like 81 pounds, that is way too high. I mean, you consider that like the stock carry weight for a character in Fallout 4 is like 100 at level 1. I mean, 84 pounds for everything not even including the helmet is guys it's ridiculous honestly power armor is lighter anyway guys that's gonna pretty much wrap up this particular video i do know that i kind of went hard on this armor and maybe on bethesda a little bit seriously bethesda you could massively improve this armor if you just decreased its weight but anyway guys if you like this video please be sure to leave a like and as always take care and i'll see y'all next time